Imagine stumbling upon a deep, dark cave on a remote island. As you explore, you uncover a skeleton, but it's unlike any human remains you've ever seen. It stands a mere three feet tall, less than a meter. This isn't some ancient fairy tale about dwarfs or tiny folk. This is the true story of Homo floresiensis, a mysterious ancient human species, affectionately dubbed the Hobbit human. Their very existence has challenged everything we thought we knew about human origins. For decades, they've remained one of paleontology's biggest enigmas. Today, we're going to unravel three of the most shocking secrets about these tiny ancestors. It all began in 2003, in a limestone cave called Liang Bua, on the remote Indonesian island of Flores. A joint Indonesian-Australian team of archaeologists and paleoanthropologists, led by Professor Mike Morwood and Raiden Sojono, were there searching for evidence of early human migration out of Africa. They had no idea they were about to stumble upon one of the most astonishing discoveries of the 21st century. Amidst layers of rock and soil tens of thousands of years old, they found what, at first glance, appeared to be a human skeleton. But it wasn't modern human, nor was it any known ancient human species. It was a creature with an incredibly tiny skull, measuring approximately 400 cubic centimeters, roughly one-third the size of our own. And when scientists, notably Peter Brown and his colleagues, meticulously reassembled the rest of the skeleton, they were truly stunned. They had found an entirely new human species. They named it Homo floresiensis, from the island of its discovery, but the world quickly adopted a more fitting nickname, the Hobbit Human. The initial findings were published in the prestigious journal Nature in October 2004, sending shockwaves through the scientific community. The first and most striking mystery about the Hobbit Human is their astonishingly small size. The most complete specimen, known as LB1, or Little Lady of Flores, stood only about 1.06 meters, or 3 feet 6 inches tall, and weighed an estimated 25 to 30 kilograms, or 55 to 66 pounds. This made them significantly smaller than any other known human species, including our own ancestors like Homo erectus. So the obvious question is why? Why would a human species shrink to such an incredible degree? The answer lies in a fascinating biological phenomenon called island dwarfism. Also known as insular dwarfism, this evolutionary process occurs when large animals colonize an island, with limited food resources and few predators. Over many generations, natural selection favors smaller body sizes, as they require less food and can survive more easily in the new environment. The island of Flores is a prime example of this phenomenon. Scientific evidence from the fossil record on Flores confirms this. Not only the hobbit human, but also an ancient elephant species, a dwarf form of Stegodon, known as Stegodon florensis insularis, had also dwarfed into tiny elephants, some no larger than a pony. Conversely, smaller animals often tend to become gigantic on islands, due to a lack of competition and predators, exemplified by the giant marabou storks and the Komodo dragon found on Flores. This indicates that Homo floresiensis adapted extraordinarily well to the harsh island environment. Their tiny size wasn't a deformity, it was a successful survival strategy, a testament to the power of evolution in isolated ecosystems. But here's where things get truly perplexing for scientists, prompting extensive debate in journals like Science and Nature. Alongside the tiny skeletons, archaeologists unearthed hundreds of sophisticated stone tools at Liang Bua. These weren't crude, basic stones. They were meticulously crafted, 
sharp-edged tools, including flakes, points, perforators, and even microliths. Evidence from tool marks on animal bones suggests these were used for hunting, cutting meat, and processing plants. The paradox? The brain of Homo floresiensis, as mentioned, had a volume of only about 400 cubic centimeters, roughly the size of a chimpanzee's brain. For context, the brain of our direct ancestor, Homo erectus, was typically around 900 cc, and our modern human brain averages around 1300 to 1400 cc. How could a creature with such a tiny brain create such advanced tools? This completely contradicts the traditional notion that brain size is directly proportional to cognitive abilities, intelligence, and the capacity for complex toolmaking. Scientists have proposed several hypotheses to reconcile this apparent contradiction. One theory, put forth by researchers like Dean Falk, suggests that while the brain was small, its neural organization might have been more complex and efficient than previously assumed for a brain of that size. This idea, sometimes referred to as rewiring, implies that the brain structures responsible for complex thought and motor control were well developed. Another possibility is that the Homo floresiensis population on Flores was descended from a larger brained ancestor, such as Homo erectus, who brought the knowledge of toolmaking with them. Over generations, while their bodies and brains underwent island dwarfism, they managed to retain and transmit these crucial technological skills. This aligns with findings of even older stone tools, dating back over one million years, found at other sites on Flores, indicating a long history of hominin presence and tool use on the island. This discovery has profoundly challenged our understanding of the link between brain size and intelligence. It forces us to reconsider what intelligence truly means, and whether there are different forms of cognitive abilities that we have yet to fully comprehend. The riddle of their small brains and complex tools remains one of the most intriguing aspects of the Hobbit human. The third secret is equally astonishing. The timeline of Homo floresiensis's existence. Initial dating of the skeletal remains from Liangbua suggested they lived between 95,000 and 12,000 years ago, as published in the early Nature papers. However, more recent and refined dating studies, notably published in Nature in 2016 by Thomas Sutikna and his team, revised these dates significantly. They found that Homo floresiensis lived on Flores from at least 100,000 years ago, up until about 50,000 years ago. The stone tools, however, range in age from about 190,000 to 50,000 years ago. This revised timeline is crucial because it means that, for a significant period, particularly around 50,000 years ago, these tiny humans coexisted on the planet with us, Homo sapiens. Modern humans began migrating into Southeast Asia and Australia roughly between 60,000 and 50,000 years ago, as evidenced by archaeological sites like Majed Bebe in Australia. Imagine that. While our anatomically modern human ancestors were beginning to settle across the globe, developing agriculture and complex art, on a remote island, a distinct tiny human species was still surviving by hunting and gathering in dense forests. Did they ever meet? Was there any interaction between these two distinct human species? Currently, there is no direct archaeological evidence from Liangbua or other sites on Flores to conclusively prove that Homo sapiens and Homo floresiensis met or interacted. However, the temporal and geographical overlap makes it a strong possibility. The fact that Homo floresiensis disappears around 50,000 years ago, coinciding with the arrival of Homo sapiens in the region, is a compelling, though not conclusive, correlation. But then, 
the traces of Homo floresiensis abruptly vanish from the archaeological record around 50,000 years ago. What happened to them? Why did they go extinct? There are a few leading hypotheses. One widely discussed theory is that a major volcanic eruption on the island might have been the cause. Flores is a volcanically active island, and a catastrophic event, like a super eruption, could certainly wipe out a small, isolated population. The presence of volcanic ash layers in the Liangbua cave supports this idea. Another hypothesis is that climate change around that period, perhaps leading to changes in sea levels or resource availability, altered their habitat and food sources, making survival increasingly difficult. And while direct evidence is scarce, some still consider the possibility that competition with newly arrived Homo sapiens played a role, though not necessarily through direct violent confrontation. Modern humans are highly adaptable and efficient resource exploiters, and even indirect competition for food or territory could have put pressure on the Hobbit population. To this day, the exact reason for their extinction remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries surrounding Homo floresiensis. The story of Homo floresiensis, supported by compelling archaeological findings and rigorous scientific analysis, is far more than just a tale of a mysterious tiny human. It is a powerful reminder of the incredible diversity of the human lineage in the past. It forces us to expand our definition of human, challenging our preconceived notions about intelligence, brain size, and the numerous ways in which hominins adapted to unique environments. From their astonishing dwarf size, their small yet capable brains evidenced by their sophisticated tools, to their fascinating, albeit brief, coexistence with us, Homo floresiensis has undeniably rewritten a crucial chapter in the book of human evolution. They prove that the path of evolution is neither straight nor simple, but rather a complex, branching tree with many fascinating detours. And that brings us to a fascinating, open question for the future of paleoanthropology. What other human species might still be undiscovered? With every new excavation, every new fossil fragment, every new tool found, we gain a clearer understanding of our own complex and surprising story. Who knows what secrets still lie hidden beneath the earth, waiting for the next generation of scientists to reveal them. If you found this video fascinating and want to explore more scientific mysteries, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content backed by solid research. See you in the next video.